These were amazing sheets of lightning and whirlwinds, and fiery dragons were seen flying in the sky. This is how the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles described the mood of impending doom in 793 AD. Things only got worse from here. Famine soon followed, and then one of the most famous events in English history transpired. Sent from hell, as the Christian monks must have thought, Viking boats landed on the holy island of Lindisfarne, just off the coast of Northumberland today. Driven in part by the gold sparkle of riches, the Vikings laid siege to a bastion of Christianity in Northumbria, where the Church of St Cuthbert stood. They sacked the monastery at Lindisfarne in brutal fashion, thought to have been on the 8th of June 793. As the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles state, the woeful inroads of heathen men destroyed God's church in Lindisfarne Island by fierce robbery and slaughter. Lindisfarne wasn't just famous in what we call England today. Worldwide, Lindisfarne was known as a bastion of Christianity. This made the Viking raid so much more significant, and it was truly a clash of civilizations, as the pagan Vikings sacked a hub of Christianity in the ancient world. Many of those pious souls of the monastery were dragged away and drowned in the sea. Yet was this the first Viking raid on the lands that we call England today? Around six years earlier, in 787, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles detail how three warships of Norsemen arrived on the coast of Wessex. This band of foreign warriors killed a local official sent to bring them to the king. In 792, a year before the raid on Lindisfarne, the Kingdom of Mercia also had to take defensive measures against pagan seamen. The raid on Lindisfarne was different, however, as it unequivalently marked the arrival of Vikings on the shores of the land we call England today. It was also an attack on a religious centre of Christianity. The Irish monk Aidan established a monastery in Lindisfarne by the orders of King Oswald of Northumbria to revitalise the Christian mission in the region. From this base, Aidan would travel to the mainland to spread the Christian word. Lindisfarne is also known as the Holy Island, and it was a centre of Christianity in the ancient world. Lindisfarne was truly an island into itself. You can even see today it's essentially cut off from the mainland. In order to get to the Holy Island, you need to cross the causeway. Behind me is the Tidal Causeway, that you can either drive or walk over. So if you are planning on coming here, you will need to check the government website. Essentially, the tide comes in at certain points. It means it's unsafe to, to cross the causeway. Um, so for large parts of the day, it is safe to cross. But if you are going to come here, I would definitely check the government website. Um, so today, between about 9.45 and 5.10, um, during the day, it was safe to cross. Um, but it's unsafe up until about 9 o'clock. Uh, and then it becomes safer so for, for five or six hours. So um, it's quite an adventure getting here. Um, so if you're planning on coming here, just check the government website. Usually during the day, it, it's fine. Um, but, but certainly at certain points, um, for four, five, six hours, um, it's considered unsafe to cross. It is interesting to wonder if the Vikings were aware of the religious significance of Lindisfarne. From a psychological warfare perspective, Sacking such a religiously symbolic centre of ancient England spread terror throughout the lands. Did the Vikings have intelligence to understand what they were attacking? Or was it simply chance that they attacked such a symbolic religious centre? Please let me know your thoughts below. In the years following Lindisfarne, the Vikings went on to sack numerous other monasteries around the British Isles who, let's face it, were easy targets. These included the monastery at Jarrow, also in Northumbria, and famously, and the monastery on Iona, in the Scottish Hebrides. The Vikings that sat Lindisfarne in 793 AD came from Norway, and came directly across the North Sea, and the attacks they launched were short, hit-and-run affairs. By the middle of the 9th century, however, Viking armies, largely Danish at this point, were conquering whole kingdoms in England, and famously established the Dane Law. Vikings also spread out across Europe, into modern-day France, and even modern-day Russia and Turkey, raiding and looking for new lands to settle. Population pressures back home is thought to be one reason 
why the Vikings ventured so far. The Viking Age in Europe did not end until the middle of the 11th century. Today, Lindisfarne is much of a tourist attraction and there is numerous things to see. Some of the attractions today include the Lindisfarne Castle, the Priory, the Lindisfarne Gospels and the stunning scenery around the island. Some people do live on Lindisfarne as well and there is hotels for anyone who wants to stay there for a couple of days. Lindisfarne, however, is probably the most famous for being one of the earliest Viking raids on what we call England today, and it foreshadowed what was to come, as the Viking Age is a dominant part of British, Irish and European history, and genetic studies have shown that Viking or Nordic DNA is an integral part of many people of the British Isles' genetic structure. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support this work through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or make a donation through PayPal, please do so via the links in the description below. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll speak to you soon.